Today we are going to paint Asim from Zombicide Green Hot in under 90 minutes. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel collectors. So today we are painting Asim from Zombicide Green Hot. So what's unique about Asim is that he has many unique materials and volumes that we need to portray in his miniature. So if you're ready, let us begin. Alright, welcome back to another 90 minute painting tutorial. So today we are painting Asim from Zombicide Green Hot. He's one of the heroes and yeah, I'd like to have a set of finished painted miniatures by the end of this circuit breaker as I'm recording this uh, voiceover it is currently raining outside so please forgive the audio if it is not too standard so right now as per all our heroes we are going to give him a warm base coat so this warm base coat is made of juice on your raw umber and a little bit of violet as this will very greatly contrast against the very cool light blue highlight which we will be giving throughout the miniature in the finishing stages. For this miniature, I think it was really interesting because he had many different materials of the armor such as the padded shoulder pad and I wanted to make sure that every single volume was well communicated to the viewer in this case to make sure the entire miniature was readable if you want to understand more about readability do check out our readability video links will be in the description so all right as you guys can see just based on the shoulder pad we have started establishing some highlights so the highlights are made using ivory and just a tinge of blue and for Asim the biggest challenge for Asim because he is uh, very covered in materials so it would be very hard to discern which is which and we should just uh, we would really need to focus on the cleanliness and the material separation for both the materials such as the green color the turban he's wearing and eventually the brown chest armor that he will be wearing that was one of the initial challenges when I was painting Asim but eventually when uh, the miniature progressed he became a lot more understandable and it was really a joy to paint I kept the focus to painting his uh, his materials with a top right lighting where he look the most aesthetic according to the pose of the model so right here I'm using Chimera Green mixed in with a bit of Vallejo model few blue and off-white so this is the progression so as you can see the way I paint is usually a progression I start, start off with a warm base color eventually I'll try to push it to a cooler base color and to an extreme cool highlight as you guys can see right here So if you guys are new to the channel and if you guys are watching this right now these, these are our 90 minute painting challenges If you are looking to learn how to paint individual components you can check out our, our other tutorials because in those tutorials I will go in depth about what colors I use and what ratios I use For these videos I tend to use them as opportunities for me to to summarize my thoughts and to share with 
our viewers what I've learned during this process thus far sort of like a video audio book kind of thing but I'll also roughly be talking about the colors because like um, say for example this leather chest armor that he's wearing is just raw umber mixed in with a bit of a uh, German camo beige from Vallejo model color I'll just roughly talk about the colors however if you want something a bit more in depth do check out our other, other tutorials alright so anyway back to the topic for Asim he was it, it would be very interesting to portray many different types of materials as you get some bamboo armor on the shoulder pad you get leather on the chest and you get woven fabric on the scarf and the turban so you want to make sure that these items are all portrayed differently while we are portraying them differently you can also understand that because they are different materials they tend to reflect light very differently also therefore what happens is that um, the nature of the reflected light also varies slightly so say for example leather would be definitely a little bit more reflective than the scarf and the bamboo armor would be the most reflective and of course non-metallic matter would be Trump, trumping everything else in terms of reflectiveness that's why they are highlighted very differently as mentioned in the Nelly the barmaid video you can even using the same colors you can convey different materials by distributing the values mid-tones the highlights very differently all right So if you are still watching up to this point, I, I really thank you. I really want to share with you guys everything I've learned during this process. And these 90 minute challenges really give me the opportunity to, to put forth some of my knowledge to see how I can share with you guys um, in my lessons. So in these 90 minute challenges, I realized that I've gotten a lot faster. I remember in my, I'm currently in my third week, going to fourth week of the challenge. I remember in my, in my first week, I could hardly finish a miniature. However, as time progressed, I understood the colors and I got, a, I got used to painting fast. And there are several things that I have, um, I have sort of documented in my own mind that it's okay that the miniatures are not perfect in this case because at the end of the day I am trying to create the most eye-catching tabletop miniatures for playing purposes of course while playing definitely there are opportunities for the viewer to look up close at the artwork however uh, the bulk of the time that the miniatures are spending are on the table and probably would be more than 30 centimeters away from you therefore I am trying to go for quick effects which appeal very much on the tabletop and they are easily identifiable because of this Therefore, I, I think I'm pretty happy with the current standard. But of course, because I'm getting faster, I have more time to refine on a lot of my work. So I would say that objectively, my work is getting better over the limited amount of time. And back to the model, I'm painting in some darker flesh. And it is definitely interesting to paint in darker flesh because uh, in all the other miniatures that I've been painting, their flesh tone tends to be uh, variations of the same color. However, it would be nice to have some diversity in the flesh tones. And I'm using more uh, raw umber in this case. 
to portray darker and less red flesh. Because the base color of um, the base color of many Caucasian flesh it tends to be colder and redder, so more towards red purple. However, if you are to looking at something like this where it is a Middle Eastern dark skin, I would think that the base color would something be slightly warmer maybe even to a very dark brown orange and because of the differing base colors therefore the skin will appear very differently that is my tip for painting um, darker flesh I also noticed while looking at photographs darker flesh tends to be a bit more reflective so the blue the bluish highlights which appear not right now tend to also carry on even further lower the uh, even further than the shoulders of the model and in this week I tried to be very controlled in the way I painted the model because I only wanted the highlights to be in certain areas to draw the viewers attention in However, I, I do make exceptions to reflective objects in other cases. As you guys can see, the miniature is almost complete and I have about 30 minutes to spare. So right now, it would be very interesting to find out how I spend these 30 minutes on the rest of the miniature. As mentioned in some of my videos, I like to spend my excess time improving on the readability of the model. If you'd like to understand more about readability, you can check out the links in the show notes below. Alright, so remember presentation is also important. For me, for these tabletop minis, I'm trying to make sure that the miniature has a black base with an orange of a uh, feel like coming from the bottom left of the miniature. So this orange feel light will carry on onto the miniature, as you guys can see. And I'm painting in some embers. So the concentration of the embers, I'm trying to make sure that the concentration is more to the bottom left. And you can roughly see that the embers are spreading from the bottom left of the miniature. The funny thing is, uh, today I realized that I've accidentally deleted a lot of footage. And I'm feeling so frustrated because this is the second time that's happened. But I'll try to avoid it happening again. Okay, anyway, back to the readability part. We want to focus on allowing the face to be identif and identifiable. And at the finishing stages, I'm pushing the highlights in certain areas so that the form and shape of the miniature can be identified as easily as possible. Going around with some black lines also help. And I'm allowing the beard to be a little bit more defined in terms of value. So just placing highlights and just feathering off the highlights. And there we have it. So I hope you enjoyed today's painting tutorial. And I hope to see you guys the next time. I hope you guys have a nice day too. Stay safe everybody. So, what do you think about Asim? Let me know in the comments below, alright? So you guys know that you like, subscribe, all the other stuff. Because we post videos every day now. So I don't want you to miss out, okay? And if you can afford it, become a patron today. 
Patrons get early access to many of my videos and exclusive content so you guys can become better miniature painters along with me. Alright, I'd like to thank my Patrons for allowing me to do so and hope to see you in the next video. See you!